Oh, gentle Savior, why don't you, Lord, hear my humble cry? While on a Thursday, I call. for life, for health, for strength. Thank you for our hands. Thank you for our feet, mouth, and tongue where we can give you praise. God, we thank you for a mother and father that showed us the way to the cross of Christ. God, we thank you for saving us, delivering us, God, from the powers of darkness. God, continue to bless this church, bless the pastor, bless the choir, bless the people of God. Oh, Holy Spirit, do what you've done down through the years, Father God. Heal, deliver, set free. Let somebody come running to the altar, even on tonight, saying, Lord, I want to be saved. I want to be delivered. Lord God, have your way, and we be careful to give you prayers. Amen. We be careful, Lord Father God, to give you all the praise and the glory and the honor, because it belongs to you. Why don't you hear? Psalms that you're hearing. This was one of my mother's um, Bible, um, books of the Bible that she really loved. That was Psalms 91. Um, as a matter of fact, let me read in entirety. And the word of the Lord reads on this wise, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flyeth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wastes at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand. But it shall not come nigh thee, only with thy eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, the habitation. There shall no evil before thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. There shall bear thee up in the hands, unless thou dash thy foot against a stone. 
Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder, the young lion and the dragon shall trample on the feet, because he has set his love upon me. Therefore will I deliver him. I will set him more high, because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. May God add a blessing to the reading of his word, and may he sanctify my hearts to it as we will mature, amen, and get a better understanding. One more time, why don't you clap your hands, amen, and give God a praise in this place. Listen, let me turn this service over to, uh, I, I think it's the psalmist, uh, uh, the praise and worship leader is going to be our sister AJ because uh, I went to K&G and I bought me a pair of shouting shoes and, and when I go to my church, I'm just different from, from a lot of people. See, the Bible says when you enter into his gates, you ought to enter with thanksgiving. And then he said, when you get in his court, you better come get this mic AJ because I'm ready to have church. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Come on, and let us exalt his name together. I say praise the Lord, everybody. Hallelujah. God is great, and greatly to be praised. 
know about you, but when I talk about going higher, hallelujah, it just does something to me. Hallelujah, because I, rem I can remember being low. Hallelujah, and Jesus has to lift me, hallelujah, out of that low place. Hallelujah, hallelujah. How many know that God has been your everything? Hallelujah, hallelujah. When you didn't have nobody, hallelujah, when you didn't have nothing, hallelujah, God can be your everything. Hallelujah, hallelujah. If you just know that, just wave your hands in the house tonight. Hallelujah, if you just know God to be your everything, can I just get one witness? Hallelujah, hallelujah.
just one more time and we honor his presence because it makes no difference if a preacher shows up, a choir shows up, a musician show up. If God don't show up, we can't have church. Do I got a witness in here on that? Amen. And we are so thankful and we honor, amen, the pastor of this fine ministry and the person of Bishop David Norman. Come on, would you help me thank God for the host pastor of this wonderful service. Thank you, Bishop. Amen. Great hand for his lovely companion that serves well here with him at Greater Bethlehem. And while you're on your feet, we might as well thank God for the honoree of tonight's service, the birthday bishop and apostle. Come on, let's all give it up for Apostle Fred Sanders. Come on, clap your hand for the man of God. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm trying to get this program and I got three people that text my phone and say, ask your daddy, where did he buy that jacket? <laughs> but I believe when you represent God, you ought to look good. Amen. I look good because God made it all good. And we are certainly thankful. Amen. And we honor all of the preachers. Amen. Of the house of God on tonight. All of you that are coming in your perspective places. We have come and assembled ourselves here once again as we did on last year to do one thing. And that is to celebrate and to thank God for the life, the legacy and the ministry of Apostle Fred Sanders. Amen. 86 years old. Amen. That's a blessing, honor, and a privilege. And we're in the days, amen, you don't need me to tell you, but we're in the time and days where people are quick to forget you. Amen. No matter what you've done for them, you could have paid rent, bought milk and diapers. Come on here, somebody. Kept lights on. But it's so easy for people to forget you. So we, the Sanders family, want to let you all that have come from wherever and however, we want you to know that we certainly thank God for you and yours that have come to help us lift up the name of Jesus and celebrate, amen, the life, the legacy, and the ministry of Apostle Sanders. 
And I tell you, I, I don't live here in Ohio anymore, but I'm in Florida. But every now and then, I tune my Facebook to Greater Bethlehem, and I know one thing, I know this choir is going to turn out tonight. I can't get no help on that. I'm going to try that one more again. I said, I know we're going to be blessed by this choir. Said, oh, I watch y'all. I am a fan. And if I knew it was black and red, I would have changed suits. Amen. But we thankful for them. Amen. Serving certainly Brother Kinzel and all of these fine musicians. Let's give the choir and musicians another hand of praise on tonight. And we promise, amen, not to bore you long. This is my sixth service in three days. Don't know how many you've been doing, but we promise not to hold you long because we are thankful. Amen. After you had your service on today, you came back tonight to celebrate this warrior of the cross. So we welcome you in the house of the Lord one more time in Jesus' name. Basically tonight consists of wonderful words and remarks from friends of our apostle that have been his friend down through the years, some clergy, some family, amen, some on the business sector, but they are all here and we're gonna move as expeditiously as we can, amen, to let them give wonderful words and remarks as they would. Amen. Not sure if there's possible a minister that can possibly bring a microphone over here, but if there's some that in the congregation, anybody don't want to stand in the pulpit. So if there's possibility, we can get a microphone on the floor to expedite the time as we roll and do what we do. We thank you if you can do that in the name of the Lord. All right. We are compassed about with oh so great cloud of witnesses. And I see a great, amen, friend, not just of the Victory family, amen, but amen, of our bishop uh, and the person of... Uh, Brother Alan Jones, amen, hallelujah. He's the only light-skinned brother in here tonight, amen. Notice I said light-skinned, y'all ain't gonna say nothing. Amen, let's hear from Alan Jones, clap your hand for him. How long ago did you come to Columbus? How many years? About 40. 40 years, I think that's when I met him. And uh, he's been an inspiration to me. Now, with the jacket up there, I would like to move him over to the piano and have a picture of me with him because Ray Charles, I met Ray Charles tonight. <laughs> Georgia. <laughs> yeah, there you go. But uh, no, it's, it's always fun to come to his birthday parties because they say white man can't jump, but you guys be, got me jumping tonight. So thanks a bunch. Come on, let's give God a praise for our brother Alan Jones. Amen. He is a man, a little history from him. He is the Sanders family realtor for over 40 years. He probably sold, amen, our family almost 50 houses. Amen. He knows exactly what he's doing. So if you're in need of a home, amen, grab a business card from him and he'll be a great, great blessing to you. Good to see Sister Christine came all the way down from Atlanta, Georgia. Amen. And they told us that when folk come out of town, Antoine, it's always right to give them words and remarks. So if you would come, Amen. If you would come, amen. You want to do it right there? She said, all right. She said, do it right there. Praise the Lord. Thank God. God bless you, Atlanta, for those wonderful remarks. All right, anyone knows our apostle? He is a great friend of women ministers. Way back decades ago, amen, he started to train women ministers all over. And we're thankful of the Lord to have two powerful women of God here tonight. Number one, in the person of Apostle Kim. She's going to come and give words and remarks. And after her, we're so glad to have one of Columbus' finest pastors on the east side. In the person of our pastor, Karen Mitchell, she's going to come and prepare to come, amen, right behind her. So we want to hear these great, great women of God. And you are women of God at a clergy, if you desire. You can come on up in the pulpit. Amen. All there. What's on you? But either way, let's give God hand praise for them. Amen. As they take us further in Jesus' name. Well, praise the Lord, everybody. I didn't say praise me. I said praise the Lord, everybody. 
Amen, amen. It is such a great honor to be here on tonight. And I just felt something bubbling up on me, but I'm not gonna get emotional. I'm probably the, one of the ones that have known him the least time the last nine months. But when I tell you he's been such a major blessing to my life, and I honor you on tonight, sir. I give God thanks and praise for you. You are a giant among giants. And every time you grace my presence, I am so humble. Continue to live. Continue to be happy. Continue to enjoy these days, for these are your best days. And I appreciate each and every one of you. I honor everybody that honor is due. Happy, happy birthday, wonderful, mighty man of God. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Let everything that hath breath praise you, the Lord. For the Lord is good and his mercy endureth forever. I am so excited to be here with Apostle Sanders tonight. He is my spiritual father. I remember uh, coming up under the ministry. A lot of times it was ma male predominant. And so I would watch the men as they preached and, and I mean just would have me so shook up in the spirit that I would have in my mind, I'm going to preach just like them. And so I was saying, sharing with some of the women one day, I said, oh yeah, I saw the brethren walk the pews. I'm gonna walk the pews too. But we had a spiritual mother, Mother Sanders. And Mother Sanders say, sweetie, you won't be walking pews in here. <laughs> you can preach, but you will be a lady. And I thank God for that because I realized that we have to learn how to do things in decency and in order. And now we have a time where people feel like that they are preachers and that they can just go forth with no training, no spirit. Okay, I know. <laughs> None of the things that your spiritual mother and father impart in you. As a matter of fact, when you ask them, who are you from? They can't tell you who they're from. They sent themselves. But I'm glad that I wasn't sent myself. I'm glad that I was called by God, but had learned how to sit under someone and learn how to be led by God. And my bishop always taught us, it is a way that you do things when you go somewhere. You don't go there and they ask you to give a testimony and you give a whole ecclesia, you don't do that. You learn to get up and be brief and then be seated. And so I thank God for all of that training. It used to be a time I would just be like, man, it seemed like we can't do anything, but I'm so grateful now. When I go places, I know what to do. I know how to do them. I know how to give honor where honor is due. And, and I couldn't have done any of that if it hadn't have been for Apostle Sanders. And so I thank you, thank you, thank you for always being a father to me and for always leading me and teaching me in the right way. I love you. Happy birthday. Have many, many more in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, women of God and people of God, for those wonderful remarks. I uh, sat next to Apostle. He said, wait a minute now. Don't you got my bio, son? I want you to read my bio. I said, well, all right. So we got to do it. See, look, I didn't have to tell him. See the music? And I thought I had some church folks, but here it is. <laughs> Bishop Fred Sanders was born Friday, April 8th. 1938 in Charlotte, North Carolina to Annie Crockett. In 1963, Bishop Sanders married Esther Lee yeah. in New York City. Bishop Fred and Queen Esther Sanders gave birth to eight beautiful children, five boys and three girls. It was in 1973 that the first Victory Deliverance Church of Christ was established in Harlem, New York. The second Victory Deliverance Church of Christ was established in Jamaica, Queens, New York in 1981. In 1983, Bishop Sanders was sent to Monrovia, West Africa by the late Bishop William Lee Bonner for one month to conduct a revival 
150 souls were baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost. Come on here. It was in 1984 that the Lord led Bishop Sanders to move to Columbus, Ohio to establish another Victory Deliverance Church. And it was his desire to establish more churches that would come out of that one. He later received a bachelor's, a master's, and doctorate of divinity degrees. He has been called by some a preacher's preacher. Bishop Sanders is a true lover of God's word. Over 500 ministers have worked under his ministry. Amen. 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 Some of them are now pastoring. Others are on the evangelistic field. Apostle Sanders believes in taking the gospel to the lost part of the world. He has preached in homes, schools, parks, colleges, prisons, and in many churches across the country. We can truly say that our founder, Apostle Sanders, is a man sent from God because of the signs that follow his ministry. Come on, clap your hand one more time for our apostle. And we thank and we honor God for him. All right, come on. The standard ovation is all right, too. That's all right, too. That's all right, too. What a man, what a man, what a man. What a man. Amen. Amen. At this time, we're going to receive a selection from the Greater Bethlehem.
look at it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Touch that neighbor and tell him he will give you joy. Oh, y'all said it like you ain't got no joy. But shake somebody's hand like they got money in it and tell him he will give you joy. But if you got that joy that the choir was singing about, just leap to your feet and shout, joy! Yeah, yes, 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 yes! My God, I feel the Holy Ghost in here now. Y'all sound like y'all trying to stop something. Y'all trying to let the devil know that this joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me. And the world
Good to see two of Victory's own coming in the house on tonight in the person of Apostle Brown as well as Apostle Drayton. Let's give God a hand of praise for these men of God and to show how much they love our leader. They didn't come from around the block or up the street. Amen. Apostle Brown flew in all the way from the Bronx, New York, and Apostle Drayton flew in all the way from Buffalo, New York. Let's give God a hand of praise for these warriors of the cross. Amen. Blessing the house of God in the name of the Lord, our Christ. We're going to have remarks, amen, from the Sanders family. And we're going to ask those of them that are in the building to come, amen, up at this time. We're going to come and stand together. We're always halfway through the program in the name of the Lord. We're already halfway through the program. But I'm going to ask the Sanders family, wherever you are, and I'm so delighted, amen, Bishop Norman, just to see Laurie sitting there with the twins. And they, ooh, I like that. Y'all come on up here too, twins. Amen. Come on, Sanders family, wherever you are. Brother Antoine, come on here. Come on here, Poppy. Come on here, our son. Even if y'all don't speak, we want, them, we want them to see us supporting our papa. Amen. Come on, come on, come on down. Come on down. Like they say on that show, the price is right. Come on down. Amen. Come on, we got to have a uh, brother Antoine. This is Sister Laurie's husband and her other two sons, amen, and her two daughters. So we're going to let the ladies, amen, the ladies, they're going to come first, amen, and they're going to give words of remarks and reflection, amen, to our apostle, and then we'll move there after them. Praise the Lord, everybody. Lord. First, giving honor to God, who's ahead of my life, to my husband, Antoine, to the angel of this house, Bishop Norman. I call him my bonus bishop. To my father, Apostle Sanders, I love you so much. To all the ministers and saints of God. I just wanted to tell my father happy birthday. I love you so much. You already know that. And when I look at my dad, I just can't help but to see my mother. And I just think about how they raised us up in Christ. And no matter if we went left, right, came back left, and went back right, you know, we, we never departed from that. And I just appreciate you. There was a time that I said, when I get of age, when I get out this house, I'm gone. I don't want to see another church. I don't want to hear no more church songs because my father was so, so, so strict. I, I was raised old school apostolic. And, you know, and, I, and now I'm just so grateful to have my apostolic roots. I didn't think I would be, you know, at this point in my life where I'm so grateful about that, but I am. 
and I'm just thankful for everything you and our mother have taught us. You know, there it will never be another Mother Sanders. And I, I just love, I love you, and I'm just appreciative of you and what my mother has done for us. So I just want to tell you, happy birthday. I'm proud of you, and many, 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 many more. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Um, so I am, well, his granddaughter. I'm Lori's daughter. Um, he lives with us, if you don't know. So I get to experience a lot. I get to get a lot of wisdom from him. And so, and I really enjoy him telling all his stories and stuff. He was just telling me and my friend Kayan right there. <laughs> he was telling us um, stories about like him and my grandma and stuff. Um, what was it, yesterday or the day before? And he was talking to us for like a long time, but you know, like when you actually get in a good talk, it doesn't feel like, oh gosh, when is he gonna stop talking? It's not like that because his stories like have a lot of content. It's really like gives a lot of wisdom. And um, so I'm really grateful for that. I'm grateful that I'm able to spend so much time with my grandpa and able to help him and stuff. And he really appreciates it. And I can tell that he loves me. And I hope I know he can tell I love him too. He tells me every day. So um, yeah, and also. He's been telling us, telling me and my sister, he want to train us to speak. So, so we're going to see how that goes. We might be one of them that came up here. But, um, yes, yeah, so I'm grateful that we, <laughs> I'm grateful that we were able, we were able to, um, you know, gain so much from him and from him live with us. Amen. Oh, happy birthday, and I love you. <laughs> um, praise the Lord, everybody. Lord. My name is Lyric, her twin, her daughter, his granddaughter. Um, like she said, I'm really thankful that I get to live, that he lives with us and stuff. He gives us a lot of wisdom. Um, pretty much everything she said is what I thought to say. So, um, thank you. I'll have your birthday, Papa, and I love you. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord, saints. Um, it was kind of hard for me to... kind of hard for me to come up here. Obviously, many people know why. Um, because I recently lost my mother, and it's been a very rough couple of months. And um, out of all the grandkids, I always tell people that I was Papa's ninth child out of all his eight, because I literally used to be with him and my, gr my grandmother all the time, like all the time. So Papa know what type of bond we have. He's literally like my other father. I call him, check up on him. He called me, check up on me. And he just, he's always been there for me since day one. And <laughs> my mom being his oldest child is just, it's just hard sometimes um, to, to see him because he's obviously way stronger than I am. So I know he's hurting like I'm hurting, but yeah. <laughs> happy, happy birthday, Papa, and I love you. On behalf of me and Arson, I'm sure he's too scared to speak. I just want to say happy birthday. You the man. Love you. Many more. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. We greet you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I'm glad to be here on this momentous occasion to give honor to the Apostle Fred Sanders on today. You know, when I look at the history of Bishop, a young black boy coming from Charlotte, North Carolina, God has anointed you and predestined you for such a time as this. And you know, sometimes I look back through the history and you pattern your life after Jesus. You know, the Bible talks about Jesus of Nazareth being anointed with the Holy Ghost and with power. And the Bible speaks when Jesus was anointed with Holy Ghost and with power, God moved throughout him. You know, God gave us the authority, but we just don't know how to use it. You know, and the Bible talks about, in my name, we will cast out devils and that devil has got to go. Ah, you know, and God gave us the authority ah, and the authority that God has given us. So, ah, the devil has got to run. Ah, but I'm here to let you know many of us today, ah, 
we know the history of who Jesus was, but we don't know the mystery, essentially, who Jesus was. Paul said, I know no man after the flesh. Most people know Jesus after the flesh, but they don't know him after the spirit. They don't know the transcendent or the transformation of Jesus Christ. But when Jesus stepped on the scene of time, he said, after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, you shall receive power. Bishop Jesus called you a long time ago. Jesus does not call the qualified, but he qualifies the call. He said in the book of 90, Psalms 91 and 7, a thousand shall fall to your side and ten thousand shall fall and go to death. But I will not let evil touch him. He shall touch not my anointed and do my prophet no harm. God has given you the authority of the kingdom of God is made up of keys. God told Peter in the New Testament, I give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bound on earth, it's going to be bound in heaven. Many of you, you're not sticking with the kingdom. But when you stick with the kingdom, whatever's loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. What that means is when you declare war against the devil, when you in the battlefield with the devil, when you hit the devil low, God will stand up in glory. He said, yeah, I'm backing it up. I want you to know, Bishop, I love you and happy birthday. Come on, one more time. Let's salute the, let, let's salute the man of God. Come on, all over the building. Very quickly, Dad, I just want to say that man of God, I thank you. I love you. Happy birthday to you. I'm, I'm, my, the Lord took my mother and he took my brother Fred, he took my sister Lawanda, and all the hell that I raised, the robberies, the, my God, you, you name it, crack smoking and breaking in people's houses and getting shot, stabbed, set on fire. I always thought that God would take me first for some unknown reason. And I just want to say, my mother and my father, they prayed for me like never before. And the Bible talks about the affection for every prayer of the righteous, how it availeth much. You know, sometimes, uh, many times I've caught myself praying, been praying over 30 years. God delivered me from the misery of my malady and from the rest of my affliction. Take this drug habit from me. And, 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 and I would tell my mother, see, like, mommy, I'm, I'm, I'm trying my best to do good and I'm, I'm trying to uh, walk the chalk line, mommy. And, 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 and what I love about my mother, she didn't, when she came back to me, Apostle Brown, she, she always directed me to the Bible. And I said, it seemed like I'm not getting my prayer through. And it seemed like God is not hearing me. She said, well, there's, stipula- uh, there, there's requirements, stipulations that you have to, amen, you have to take. And, and she said, go to the book of Psalms. And, 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 and I believe it's somewhere around 84. And the Bible said, no good thing will I withhold from you if you walk right before me. And so she said, babe, you can't be out here doing drugs and getting high and carrying on. But I say that to say this, my mother and my father, they prayed and they kept on praying for me. And I always been the strange and unusual in my family. I always been unorthodox. As a matter of fact, I'm the eldest now. I'm the oldest. Some of my little brothers and my little sisters. And I thank God for all of them. But daddy, I want you to know that I love you and I thank God for you. I was reading this story and it reminded me of me and you. Then drew near unto him, this is Luke 15 and 1, all of the publicans and the sinners for to hear him. And the scribes, the Bible say, and the Pharisees, they murmur and complain, saying, this man receiveth sinners. And he sits down and he got the audacity to eat with them. But what I loved about this prophet, this preacher, he always had a prophetic word or a parable that he would preach to the people story goes praise God the Bible talks about how there was a man that had a hundred sheep and how amen one of them got out of the flock and amen he had to leave the 99 in the open country and he had to go out and search for the one that was lost and so history will let us know that he searched in 
every valley and on every mountainside until he found his lost sheep. And the Bible said he come back rejoicing, saying, rejoice with me, my friend. I found my lost sheep. Then the Bible talks about there was a lady, possibly an old lady, that had ten silver pieces of coin. And then the Bible said that, Lord, she lost one of her coins. And possibly she got a lamp and she lit it and she swept up under every bed and Lord behind every door until she found her lost coin and she told her friends to rejoice with me because I found my lost coin but then the Bible talks about a man that had some sons in some way Lord and somehow praise God one of them said father give me the portions of good that fall up to me <laughs> yeah Lord <laughs> and how many days amen the Bible said that <laughs> he took his journey <laughs> into a farm a country <laughs> yes Lord <laughs> and he wasted <laughs> all <laughs> that he had <laughs> but what I like about <laughs> this young man <laughs> he came <laughs> to himself <laughs> you got to look at the story <laughs> because his situation <laughs> did not change <laughs> until he started talking to himself he said how many of my father's servants had bread and enough to spare and I I I perished with hunger he said I'm going back to my father's house yeah Lord and I'm going to say father I know that I disrespected you. Yes, Lord. I know I was wild and reckless. I know I smoked this up cracker. I know that I stole from you. I know. Yes, Lord. I was looked at as the last of Lisa. The lost, the left out, and the last. in my mind I'm coming back home to say father 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 yeah make me one of your highest servants if I got to sweep the floor I will I will I will clean the bathrooms make me would you make me Come on, clap your hands for the preachers. Oh, that's what the Sanders family are. Believers, preachers, singers, dancers, but we love the Lord. Would you clap your hand one more time for all of those words and remarks that have come forth. Amen. We're over halfway done and we're doing this service if the Lord say the same Bishop Norman in two hours span in the name of our Christ before the choir comes to give their final selection and we just have about three or four more ministers and we'll be done and then we'll hear from our honoree. Is that all right? Amen. But we are certainly thankful, amen, for all of those words and remarks from the Sanders family. Amen. And we're thankful, amen, that God has kept our family. And as our niece, amen, London uh, said, between this service and last year, it was the Lord's will uh, to take our sister to glory. But how many of you know if you believe in the body, Bible, you have to read it and believe all of it. And it says to be absent from the body. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Is to be present with the Lord. And we are thankful for her. Let's give our sister Lawanda, amen, a hand for the life that she's living and the God that she's with even at this time. 
We're going to receive an offering, amen, and we're going to ask you that can and will to be a special blessing. I'm going to ask the finance officers, the deacons, amen, of this church, if they don't mind, to come and assist. And there have been so many that have desired to come. I cannot read all these names, even so, so many are watching on Facebook. And I'm getting all of these texts, but I can't keep stopping and reading all these names. But we want to thank God uh, for, amen, your good friends, Bishop in New York, and the person of Bishop Huey Rogers and his wife, as well as Apostle Wilbur Jones and his wife. They send their love and send a happy birthday for you, amen, as well as uh, Bishop George Dawson, amen, our former assistant pastor who desired greatly. Uh, to be here with your dad, but he's stuck in North Carolina preaching the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. And there may be some that said, now I don't see Bishop Joel. Where is the youngest boy? Amen. Well, we were with him all weekend celebrating dad in Dayton, Ohio, and him and his wife right now are on their way back, amen, to Africa to conduct some church business, and God is doing something great in Africa. So continue to pray for them. Pray that they have safe uh, travel, amen, all the way there uh, to Ghana, Africa, amen, as they're conducting some church business, amen, for the Lord. The apostle, he's turned 86, and his official birthday is on tomorrow, amen, on April 8th, his official birthday, and we ask all, amen, without begging or pleading, but simply following Matthew 7 and 7, that says, ask that it shall be given. If you are here and you said, I am a friend, amen, I'm family, amen, the apostle have been a great blessing to our life. We ask, we request of you, if you can and if you will, to sow an $86 seed, but we are wise enough and smart enough to know that everyone don't have that to give. Can you say amen? But there are some that says, man of God, I do have an offering and I will bless him in this service. And there have been so many already that have sent cards, that have already saw him, that have talked to him. Some have sent things in the mail and we thank God for all of the blessings. But I found out a long time ago, if you want to be blessed, bless a true man of God. Come on here, somebody. The word of God tells us that, amen? So I'm going to ask you that can and will to prepare your hearts, amen, to do that. And again, if you cannot give that ask for a seed of $86, do the best you can because most of all, the Lord loves a cheerful giver. And I do believe as you sow this seed to the life of our Apostle Sanders that the Lord will truly, richly bless you and yours. Amen? So prepare your heart to give if you would in the name of the Lord. I'm going to ask Brother Castleman to come and pray as the people of God prepare their hearts to give in the name of our God. God and Father, we come to you today with the humble heart, Lord Jesus. We ask you to bless the ones that can't give, the ones that cannot give, Lord. Please bless this um, 86th birthday, Lord, with the Apostle Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Mr. Castleman. All right, are you prepared to give? Amen. Let us all stand to our feet in unison together. Hope I'm doing this right. And if you would, turn, turn toward the aisle. Amen. If you would, everyone is standing. Thank you. And again, you cannot, I'm sorry, thank you. I'm going to face the wall. All right, get me straight. Face the wall. I'm going to cause the traffic jam in there. <laughs> face the wall, amen, and come down from the rear in the name of the choirs preparing to come, amen, after the offertory. The pulpit is coming down first, all right.
clap your hands. Again, we thank God for all of you that have given, amen, to the life of Apostle Sanders. He's going to be the last word of Mark. We're going to hear from the choir, a few more preachers, and we're going to hear from our honoree, and then we'll be going home. Is that all right? Clap your hands as the choir comes and give us their final selection. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. How many know that Jesus is the sweetest name? Do you believe that? How many believe there's power in the name of Jesus?
If you know that there is power in the name of, oh, you clapping so light like you don't know there's power in the name of Jesus. What a wonderful time we're having tonight. I don't know about you, I'm having a good time in Jesus, being compassed about with so many great cloud of witnesses. We are almost at the climax, at the close of our service. Amen. And unfortunately, of course, we know that everyone cannot give words, remarks, but we do want to acknowledge some great friends of our Apostle Sanders that have come out to our service, amen, to the service to celebrate him. And we want to just wave your hand and acknowledge Elder Michelle Roy that served well. Amen. Wave. Amen. Got the bumblebee colors on. Amen. We thank God for Elder Michelle Roy that served well at Victory as one of our elders. Amen. Family is here tonight in the person of Pastor Ilona. Would you wave your hand, Pastor Ilona Sanders? We thank God, amen, for her being here tonight to celebrate, amen, the uh, birthday celebration of our apostle. And, and we also have one of my favorite, amen, I no longer have my mother and this woman of God stepped in as a good mother that helped and advised me when I was a young pastor serving here in the city of Columbus. And that is the person of Mother Virginia Lowry. Come on here, hallelujah. Come on, give Mother Lowry a hand. I love you, Mother, I appreciate you. Amen. You know you're anointed when your first name is a state, Virginia. Good God. Oh my. <laughs> we thank God, amen, for her, and we love and appreciate her, amen, being here for our pastor. Our last and final remarks are coming from these warriors of the cross that grace the roster with us, amen. The first is going to come, amen, will be Pastor Marquise Green. He's been, amen, a son of victory since he was a very, very young man. And I, I say this to Pastor Marquise in front of his face and behind his back. I count him as a true son because he not only went out from victory to pastor, but he bought a church from the bishop and paid for it. See, you didn't get that too much because you ain't a preacher. But there are so many pastors that have left out of apostle, amen, and old money didn't pay, but he is one of the true faithful sons that I can say he did what he said he would do, and we're going to hear from him first, and after him, amen, again, all the way from Buffalo, he came all the way down just for this occasion, and that is Bishop Gerald Drayton that sits there. Come on, clap your hand for him. He's going to come second. And final, amen, the one that serves vice in our church fellowship in the person of Bishop Eric Brown. I'm not sure if your wife here is your wife here. Okay, yes, him and his wife, they flew here to celebrate our bishop, so they're going to come in that fashion. Clap your hands for Pastor Green. <laughs> Praise the Lord, everyone. Come on, we can do better than that. Praise the Lord again. I'm so glad to stand here. I give honor to honors due. Uh, Apostle Sanders taught us how to do and what to do, but as I've been pastoring for these last five years, all I can say is thank you, man. I really can say thank you because um, if, you are, if you're not a pastor, you don't know the hell. I, I'm going to be perfectly honest. Hell we go through behind the backs and the faces. But what I found out because of your leadership, Apostle Sanders, that I can withstand the heat. Mm -hmm. If you can't stand the heat, then you need to sit down. Come on, you better talk, man. And I found out it's not easy, but because of the training that we had, the training that we had to endure, coming from a Baptist church, at eight years old, when I met Apostle Sander, he wasn't a pastor in the city yet. But for some odd reason, God hooked us up. He would go and evangelize, and he'd be at different churches. And somehow, I was there. I can't tell you how. I can't tell you why. Didn't have a car. Couldn't drive. I was only eight years old. 
But I walk out west to Rehoboth Temple. I believe, no, 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 that's long. I will walk when I knew he was there, or I will find out and I would get there. Something connected us. And then when I became a pastor and then got consecrated as a bishop, and Lord, that's another story. But the devil himself, come on, preacher, try to show up and break us up. Sometimes I, I'm not bold enough. I wasn't bold enough to say this. and Because and, in my church, I say what I want. I don't care what people think. But I've learned to be bold in God. If you want to play with God, that's, your, that's, what, that's what you do. But time is, time is over. God is not playing with us. Church has become just as crazy as these people want to be. Excuse me, Bishop Norman, if I'm being wrong, you, you beat me up. I'm coming to find out that some folks that say they holy ain't holy. They put on a facade. They look good, smell good, but dirty in the sight of God. And I found out only because of the teaching that he gave me that I'm able to withstand what I've been going through. But thanks be unto God. Because of his grace, under both Sunday, and because of his mercy, you can stand the test of times. And to Apostle Sanders and to the Sanders family, I look at Lori Ann. You know, Lori Ann beat us all up. She made me run from the church as a little boy. I don't know if she remember that. But nothing, no one, I don't care who they are, will ever be able to break us up. And I say that to his face, and he always say it to me behind closed doors. And I want to say it to you openly. I don't care what may come. I'm still your son in the gospel. Because of you, I'm a pastor, and I, 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 I preach the truth to the people. I don't lie to them, and I don't try to take their money, because that's what you taught me. But thanks be unto God, I am who I am because of you and Jesus Christ. I want to tell you in front of your children and everyone else, I love you. And I still will fight for my Godfather. If anybody know Baldini, let me tell you the truth. I will put you out of the church and I will fight you over my Godfather. Right. And ain't nothing has changed. Come on. I was born by the river in a little old tent. Oh, just like the river. I've been running ever since. It's been a long, a long, a long time coming, but I know change is going to come. Oh, yes, it will. When I go to the movies and I go downtown, somebody said, boy, you bet not hang around it's been a long a long time coming but I know change is gonna come oh yes it will when I go to the movie and I go downtown he said, boy, you better not hang around. It's been a long, anybody know? Yeah. It's been a long, it's been a long time coming, but I know change is going to come. Oh, yes, it will. Oh, yes, it will. We Hallelujah. It's been a long time coming. But we know a change is going to come. Glory be to God. Apostle, we love you. And thank God for you. For what you have done for me and what you have spoken into my life. And many people you have spoken into their lives. I know that 
you don't appreciate it. But I thank God for you. And I know one thing about it. If God be for you, he's more than the world against you. God got you. And I thank God for your family, your sons, your daughters, your grandchildren. Thank God. God's got greater things. Because your latter shall be greater than your beginning. And I thank God for you, sir. And anything we can do, we're here. And there's some more blessings coming your way. I got a ticket for you to come to Buffalo. Amen. You don't have to drive. You're going to fly. Glory be to God. Is that all right? Somebody tell God thank you. We thank God for the angel of this house tonight. Thank God for you. Thank God for you. Thank God for you, sir. We enjoy that word that you brought. And we was over at the church, you know, for the, for the fellowship that we had. That was a word. We thank God for you. Keep us in your prayers as we pray for you in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord again, everybody. We thank God for your illustrious and anointed man of God, the angel of this great house, the honorable Bishop David Norman. We thank God for him. Amen. Uh, and his wife. We thank God for her. Amen. Uh, and, and, and him always being available to help celebrate our leader. Uh, and we thank God just for his generosity, his love, and just being a good neighbor. One bishop said that when God is blessing your neighbor, it must mean that he's in the neighborhood. So while the angel is at Bishop Norman's house, I'm living right next door so I can be next in line for my blessing. I learned a lot of lessons in life and I'm starting to see that even more so as a young man coming up. And I can remember I was about 15, 16 years old coming back with a friend from basketball practice. And as we were walking home from basketball practice, there were a bunch of uh, proud boys if you will. I call them proud boys. They were white boys with German helmets and long swords and they had licenses to drive at 13 and 14 years old. They had all kinds of things and my friend uh, looked in where they were and provoked them to come chase us. And as we began to run, his bag began to break and he got caught and I got away. And as I began to look back, as they surrounded all around him, I said, I can't leave him. Even knowing that it would cost me my life. So I stopped. It was nothing that nobody taught me. It was just something that you're born with. It was just in me to be with you. So I went back. I went back and they engulfed around me and all of a sudden, I wasn't saved at the time. There was a young, short, white boy that kind of parted. It had to be about 30 of them. He parted them and walked through the crowd. It just so happens that this short, little Fonzie-looking white boy, we were in class together, science class. I knew him. And he released us. He said, oh, no, I know him. Let him go. And we got out of that situation supernaturally without me knowing God. And, and I, I learned something, learned something about leading and following. Because I got filled with the Holy Ghost on an aircraft carrier right in the middle of the Mediterranean Sea. And God filled me with the Holy Ghost. Then went to an apostolic church when we got home. But, 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 but I learned something because everybody wants to be a leader. And leadership is good. But my blessing didn't necessarily come from being a leader. It came from being a follower. 
Leadership is one thing, but followership is something greater. And the more I would follow leaders, the more God would elevate me and bless me. Promotion would come often, not from wanting to be in front, but from wanting to be behind. So followership took me from the background all the way to the front. After a while, 20 years went by, retired from the military. 23 years went by, retired from chief of chaplains from all of the prisons in New York. From following and learning. And I realized that, that if you want to be great in God, learn how to follow. And this is where we are in life now because we don't have much time left and I'm realizing that I want more of God I want more power I want a closer relationship I want even more of a greater personal development I, I want to see the glory of God I want to I want to feel more fire I want to feel more more grace I want to see more miracles from my God and I realized something about the Lord that when you genuinely ask God that I want to be closer to him it's important that you're around people that know the Lord that love God that know his voice that know who he is that facilitate miracles that's why I love coming to Greater Bethlehem Temple because you feel the power the humility when you serve the Lord and I don't want nothing from nobody but the glory of God and I realized as a young age when I learned how to ride motorcycles that you got to be careful in the turns where you got to be careful when you're riding behind somebody because when the person in front moves to the right you got to go to the right with them and when they move to the left you got to go to the left with them and when you follow somebody the blessing is not going straight ahead but sticking with them in the turns when stuff get rough when things are out of control and you're still riding along with them the power is in the turn and I realized as this man of God turns in the 86 will we stay with him in the turn I don't want nothing from him but the glory of God and Elijah looked at Elisha and said I want a double portion of your spirit I'm following you but I need not money not position but the glory of God and uh, he was there Elijah stayed there in the turn, in the turn, in the turn. And when the whirlwind came for the man of God, Elijah said, Behold, the chariot of Israel, the ministry that held you, the anointing that you operated in, I see it going up in the whirlwind. And when he followed him, as he went up, as he followed him, something dropped down from glory on his life. Follow your leader. And I follow this man of God. 17 years. Just for God's glory. Happy birthday, my father, in the gospel.
Come on, another quick great hand of praise for these great men of God, Pastor Green, Bishop Drayton, and Bishop Brown. We certainly thank God for them in the name of our Lord Christ. We again thank God, special thanks for the host pastor, his lovely wife, Lady Norman. Would you give her a praise? You have a wonderful, sweet spirit, and I love your spirit. I love you. Would you thank God for the leadership of this church that opened up their doors? Oh, you, no, you're going to do better than that. Come on, let's give God a great hand of praise for Bishop David Norman and First Lady Norman. Amen. Opening up, being nice, being kind for our bishop to have his celebration here. We're going to have the final remark from the clergy, and that is in the person of this pastor, Bishop David Norman. Clap your hand one more time for him. I've had some good days. Yes, sir. Watch yourself, yes, sir. I've had some hills, hills to climb. I've had some weary days and sleepless nights. Oh, when I look around and I think things over, all of my Say neighbor! 
every now and then you gotta learn how to praise him when your mind when your mind is confused my god my god i, I bless the lord be seated be seated I wish I had a real church. Can't nobody! Uh. Well, if y'all gonna praise it, praise it, but let's go home. We gonna do one or the other.
and say, oh, neighbor, tell them how I found out. Grab your left ear and say, neighbor, can't nobody. praise again for the host of this wonderful service again we thank God for all that have come from near and far our time has been spent but it's been spent good <laughs> Whew, good God almighty greater Bethlehem never disappoints is anybody in here beside me ever went to a restaurant and it was real good every time you went 
No, come on, because sometimes it's a hit or miss. You, you do know what I'm talking about, don't you? But I don't know what y'all doing in this house, First Lady. But don't stop, because the power of the Lord is in this place. If you feel him in this place, just clap your hand and say, Thank God for his presence. God bless you again. We thank God for all have come. Would you be so kind as we come to the climax of the service? We are all standing in unison in this house. We are thanking God again for the life, the legacy, and the ministry of our very own Apostle Fred Sanders. And he is coming now with final words of remarks and benediction. Clap your hands as he comes in the name of the Lord. Thank you for receiving me. You may be seated. And I promise to be brief. I give honor to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To my long, long, long time friend and brother, the pastor, and his lovely wife. As I watched the saints praise God, my mind went back, let me get it right, 40 or 45 years when I came to Columbus, I preached right here. And the heavens opened up. God worked miracles in this place. And as I look out now, looking at the saints, I see saints of God from at least about 10 different states. They're all over the place. And I thank God to see you. Words cannot express how glad I am. I'm so happy to see you. I feel your love, not because of the money, but what I feel and what I know supersedes money. I received so, so, so many calls. It must have been over 300. I had to turn my phone off. And what made it so good, Pastor? Money came with them. I said, Lord, I thank you. And I was twisted and turned and said, Lord, we have to go back to Africa. We're going back very, very soon. And I want to say for my other son, Joel, he had to, had to, he had, he had to go. He's there now. He's there now. Amen. God answered a prayer. Yes. A miracle. God, he had to go. And I promise I'm not going to tell his testimony, but it was a fulfilled prophecy. I said, God is going to do great things. And he did just that. Amen. And he took a plane 12 o'clock today, and he called me back to let me know things is all right. Amen. And so we're looking forward to going back to Africa in about the last part of this year. We're, we're believing God to feed not less than 10,000 children. And I want you to pray for us. Amen. That we're going to feed in Jesus' name. And the Lord led this on my heart to get the money. I'm, I'm contemplating on getting 50 people to donate for the children of Africa 
$100. If I get 50 people, that's 5000 right? Now, Joel, Jonathan, the wife, they're going to get the other five. <laughs> but God have laid it on my heart, amen, to raise that money for those children. If you had a seen what I was able to see while I was there, you would have never forgotten it. Amen. They kept me crying because of the condition. And it's one thing I don't understand. How can you see children that don't have food to eat and you don't put a piece of bread in their mouth? It's a sight to see. The way I can explain briefly the condition of the city, you know how countries fight each other, they blow up each other, country. That's the way um, Ghana look, like it gets blown up. But God is really, really, really blessing the people. And the way they worship God, you would think everything is all right. They don't have worship service like we do over here. You know, you keep some of our people over an hour and a half, you would be in there by yourself. But the longer, if, no, if, if the preacher get up and preach 20 minutes, a half hour, that's like an insult to them. Am I right? They'll just listen to you and they'll shout and praise God and I said, I've never hardly seen nothing like this. So I, I can't wait to go back. So I want you, how many promise to pray for us? Just this, this raise your right hand if you promise to pray for us. Okay, okay, okay. I didn't see no hands. I got the message. But anyway, I want you to pray for us. I said, Lord, if I never buy another pair of shoes, another nothing. And be honest, I don't have to buy no more clothes for the next 10 years. Not boasting, but to be honest. See, we can spend everything on ourselves, but we can't do nothing for nobody else. Isn't that something? Isn't that amazing? But I want you to pray. I want you to Pray for us, amen, in Jesus' name. Again, I'm so excited. Words can not express how glad I am to see you. I see people from all over. And I, I, I want to say something. Come here, come here, Brother Allen, real fast. <laughs> I'll call him a white brother. Look here. <laughs> Look here, stand there, turn around. Now, between myself and all my boys, we must, you must have helped us to get over 50 homes. Am I right? At least 50. I think you helped Michael to get back <laughs> over 30 by himself. Now, I call him up here because I want you to see him and know him and hey, get his phone number. <laughs> you know why? Because some of, some of you, how many want to buy a home that don't have nothing? Let me see your hand. <laughs> Nobody here want to buy a home? Come on now, I'm trying to. <laughs> I'm putting a word in for y'all and y'all can, Lord help me. I'll put your hand up. How many would like to have a, a, a home that, that look like, uh, I'm telling you something, he'll help you. When the, when the service is over, get his phone number. He'll look out for you. He won't, he won't hurt you. I promise. Amen. Let me, let me, let me tell you. Hold on. He want to say something. He said, it's probably been 10 years ago that I went to one of his celebrations of life, and people came in his, that he had mentored came all over from the country, and I thought, this is a wonderful memorial service while he's still alive. And since then, I've lost a, a girlfriend, and I had a memorial service for her 
two days before she died. And it was wonderful. So if, if you know somebody that is dying and they're, have a memorial service for a while, they're still alive. So they can do it. This is one wonderful thing I've learned from going to his, and he's still alive. Let me say something one more time. How many are contemplating on purchasing a home? Perhaps now. Yeah. Can I see your hands one more time? I just want to see something. Okay. My goodness. Thank you. Guess what? Alan, you know I called you up and I told you to do something for me. It crossed my mind, but it wasn't God, but it was something my flesh, my human desire was telling me what to do. I called him up. I said, here, what I want you to do for me. I want you to find me a building, a place a way, that have, that I could have four apartments. And I want, I want it to be so that I have a, like a storefront on the first floor. And I'm going to open up like a little Bible school like I had before, a little church. And, you know, I just want to do something. But the Lord took that away from me. They don't go there. You have served your generation. It's time for you to sit down and rest a little while. I'm not going to drop dead in the church from the poor pit having a heart attack for overworking. There's one thing I notice about our preachers, they don't know how to sit down. We can't do it all. You can't prove, you can't, you can't, you can't, uh, what's that word? You can't satisfy everybody. And really, I'll tell you something, you can't really satisfy yourself or your flesh you think you can but you can't and the spirit spoke to me and I'm almost finished the Lord said you don't need that first of all you don't need no home you stay with your daughter Laura Laura uh, my daughter Laura uh, Laura Ann and her husband oh they treat me like I'm King Solomon I'm not just that. They there. Raise your hand. Look, let these people know I'm telling the truth. See, now, if y'all don't raise your, raise your hand, they're going to think I'm lying. This man, you would think he was my blood son. As a matter of fact, I don't, I don't like calling him sometimes my son. I said, you're my son. He'd do anything within reasoning that I asked him to do. And you talk about cooking? Honey, hush. You talk about eating? Honey, hush. And I want to say to them, I thank God for them. God gave me something. This is going to be for everybody. Take this in. God spoke to me when I first got married. This is what he said. Don't ever, never let nobody break up your home. Oh, I ought to got a man on that. The Spirit spoke to me and said, they're going to fight you like cats and dogs. If I were to tell you some of the things I've gone through, you wouldn't believe it. You would not believe it, but God said, don't let nobody break up your home. I don't care what you and your wife go through, work it out, and I'll bless you. I don't care how bad your sons and daughters get. It, it, David, he talked about it. He went to jail. Oh, he went. This brother raised so much hell. Words cannot explain. I mean, he was terrible. Look at me. Every time I thought 
Every time I received a phone call, I thought it was about his death. Oh my God. I had young men calling my house. I'm coming to your house to get my money. I'm going to shoot up everybody. They getting drugs. You know how drug addicts do. When they want some drugs, they'll, they'll get drugs from anybody. But some of these brothers, you can't get their drugs and don't pay for them. You will get shot. But God work a miracle. You know what he did? Let me hold that Bible. Please, give me a book. I hold this book in my hands. I lie not. Just listen. When all of my kids were someone, some of them was eight, some was nine, some was ten, the Spirit spoke to me, and he told me what all my children was going to be. And all that God showed me what they was going to be, I told them before it happened. Am I right, brother? Davin's going to be a preacher. Davin's going to be a preacher. Loran was going to be a singer. Loran was going to be a singer. He the whole. All your son was going to be preachers and watch this. I said, now, Lord, there's one more I don't see in the pulpit. We call him the businessman. We call him the man that had the 25 houses plus. Did you, y'all didn't hear what I say? But holy, he got the first one from Papa. I bought the house. I said, that house had three apartments. I tell you, here, take the keys, start from here, get the rent, don't move, amen. Keep this house, and when, when you raise enough money, get your dream house. Boy, he was smart as a whip. He did everything I told him to do. If you were to see his house now, you'd be shocked. Would his friends go and visit him? They don't even want to leave. And it's paid for. And, ooh, you hear what he say? It's paid for. Paid for. Done bought about five cars. He had that all. God had truly blessed him, but he, he never forgot his father. None of them have never ever forgotten me. All of them are blessed greatly with businesses. They don't have to worry about nothing. You want to get a good hairdo, go to Laura Ann shop. <laughs> Her husband is greatly blessed. I thank God for all of you. And I often tell them, ask them periodically, have I been a good father? Excellent, excellent. Thank you. I kept my promise. And I want to say to all of you, don't let nobody break up your home. Don't let nobody break up your home. And I want to say to all of you that are here, that have come near and far, I thank you so very, very much. But I want to, I want to shock you with something. I'm rich. <gasps> you say, I know that old line preacher had a lot of money. And guess what? I'm rich. Don't ask me for no money after the service, though. <laughs> I'm going to tell you when I got rich, two minutes. I got rich in 19, what, 1962 All right. when I got saved. Oh, die, you got Every true bone child of God, according to the Bible, when you get saved, you really are rich. You are rich spiritually and you are rich spiritually and oh, you, my God, Lord 
but they don't know that. No good thing, maybe this will help you, will I withhold from them that do what? Walk up right. Your father said this act, seek, knock. Do you, do you get it yet? You are rich. Now, if you don't know the claiming, you'll never have it. How many have claiming or you going to start claiming it? Let me see your right hand. It's something. Our people is something. Sometimes they think they know it all and don't know nothing. And when you teach them or try to show them how to get it, they get angry. They want to curse you out. But I want to tell you something. When you don't know what you think you know and really what you think you know you really don't know, be wise. Don't be foolish. In other words, let me say it like this. Don't be stupid. The worst thing you could say in the church is a stupid pastor. <laughs> Brother, don't ever get no stupid wife because you won't be able to do nothing. She'll run everybody out of the church. I had a pastor brief, let me say that. Now, this is my celebration, right? The Africans say, they don't say, can we talk? They say, can we talk? Can I talk for two minutes? This man, out of all the brothers that work with us in our organization, no one had a church that the members worked with him like he had. But listen, listen at this preacher. Don't never let this happen. A false prophet came in this house, I mean in this church, supposed to be prophesying, but he was prophet lying. And he told, he called his wife out and told her, listen, somebody in here trying to take your husband. She believed it. From that so-called line prophecy, she wouldn't get along with no woman in the church. Every time a woman would shake her husband's hand and so forth, she would look at them as though they're trying to take her husband. It got so bad, listen, she ran just about all the members out the church. My hand is on the book. He would call me from here. Said, I'm praying your way. Please come and talk to my wife. That's all I want you to do. I would talk to her. I would call up. I said, Lord, what to do? How to do? I would call up before the whole church. I said, I want you to look out there. All these people that you see, they love you. They was buying her clothes. They were doing everything. But that, that lying spirit, that, that prophecy, that vision, guess what? Basically, she ran all the members out of the church. Members paying tithes, doing some of everything. Bought them a home, built a church from the ground. The Lord gave me a word to give him. I didn't want to give it to him. But God should give him this. If she don't stop, she going to die. Ah, glory. He's going to take her out. Guess what? I think about, if my members serve it well again, I think about a year and a half later, the book is in my hand. He said, Apostle, your prophecy came to pass. I said, what are you talking about? My wife is dead. You have to be careful when you put your hands on the man of God. Don't ever do that. You'll be cursed. You'll be cursed when you do that. And I'm going to hit you with something else a lot of saints don't know. Let me give you this tip. You can put your hands on one of God's servants. 
you ask him to forgive you, guess what? He will forgive you, but this is what a whole lot of saints don't know. He'll still punish you sometime. Hey, 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 this is a killer. And he'll kill you sometime. Ooh, so what kind of talking is this? It's in the book. I'm telling you what the Lord said. There was a whole lot of people went to the grave because they put their hand on God's people. You better be careful how you talk. You got to be careful how you talk about them. Speak what you do know and testify what you have seen. And there's something that's going on here right now. All over. I'm going to warn you on this here. Every time you turn the television on, listen. We have a group of people, our people, have a program, some have a program coming on every day speaking against the preachers about what they have done and the mistakes they have made. No one has the authority to put their hands on God's servant. You're not supposed to do that. Who gave you the authority? It's only one man in the church have the authority from this year to correct the people and to call you out and set you down. Will somebody who tell me who that is? Nobody here know that? If you know what, who, who was that person, hold your hand up. See what I'm saying? It's the pastor. And if he don't correct you and get you straight, the Lord told him, your, your blood will be on him. Pastoring, pastoring people is nothing to play with. Don't you run out here and grab no church because you preach a little bit and somebody pat you on the back. Brother, going to take a more and pat on the back. Let me say this here. I'm almost finished. I just want to help you. Every time I get up, I like to say something that's going to help the people. Don't let nobody run you out of the church. I don't care how many mistakes you've made. Guess what? Guess what? We all make mistakes. Nobody's perfect but God. If you know your brother or sister have made a mistake, don't get on the phone and scandalize their name. But get instead of getting on the phone, get on your knees and pray for them. Because what you're saying about them today, it could happen to you tomorrow. What you're saying about their children, it could happen to your children. Be careful. I could tell you some things that call your head or stand on your head. Be careful when you talk about people. Don't do that. But I want to say this in my closing. Walk with God. Nobody is worth going to hell for. Could I say that one more time? Yes, sir. Come on, preacher. Nobody is worth. I've seen a whole lot of beautiful women, but I ain't seen the one yet I'm going to hell over. Give me that book one more time. Don't, don't rush me now. This is my time. There was a time not too long ago either I'm telling on myself I used to pray oh Lord help me to overcome this Lord mm -hmm. if it's your will Lord give me that sister Lord Whoa. Lord show me man that ain't, that, that ain't my will that ain't you and if you had, you couldn't keep it. Because the way you are, you ain't going to stand for nobody hollering and fussing and cussing to you. You ain't going to hold with that five minutes and all my sons the same way. <laughs> when I see them with a woman, once I look at her and talk with her, she come around three or four times, I say, man, you, just, you ain't going to keep that woman. Get away from it. Because I know what they like. 
I've known them ever since they was born. Shouldn't I know? Then let me tell you something. You know what your kids are going to do too. That's a gift. God give you that. How many of you have told your children a thing, they disputed you, and they thought it wouldn't come to pass, but it did? Could I see your hand? Nobody? Oh, that's all I have. Okay, all right. Okay, I'm a hush. Okay. Getting back to all of you, I see you, and I thank God for you. I'm touched. My brother, all the way from Alabama, I'm pointing you out because that's where my wife was from. We traveled together. We are a great, great preacher. I thank God for hearing all of you. My, my uh, Lona, this stand Lona. Look at this woman, y'all. Look at this woman. This woman is so gifted. If I were to tell you how gifted she is, you would be shocked when I say gifted. Oh my God. She helped me so much down through the years. Really, up to this present time, Lona, I forever love you. And I forever thank God for the work that you have done. And other women of God that are here that have blessed me, I thank God for all of you. I'm grateful to God. I want you to do me a favor. Keep me in your prayers. Keep me in your prayers. If I can be of any help to you, I ain't talking about no money. They didn't get that. But spiritually, you need counseling, a word, whatever. I'm open, and it don't cost you nothing but prayer. Praying for me, and I'll pray for you. I want to thank God for my friend and brother again. All these great men of God, brother. Listen. Come here, sir. This is our vice presider, our outstanding man of God. He never tried to cut my throat, never speak against me. He's there when I didn't be there. There was time, look at me, I wanted to give up, but God used him to the extent that he said, Pray on, Pastor. I'm with you. Just sit down and rest. I, I'm with you. I take over. I do this. And I want you to know to the masses, I don't have to die because you've been wonderful. And I thank God for you. And like you have all them services for me, make sure I have money in my pocket. And you, you pay the, for the trip for me to come. This man is like, a, feels sometimes like a father to me. That's the truth. Here's what I want to do for you. I want to have a, an appreciation service. If you want friends, you got to show yourself friendly. Do unto others as you have others to do unto you. Now you can sit down. I could look, I could go on down the line. This man of God, the time is going out, they're hitting the watch. Grabbing the Bible. We're going to grab you next. You hear what he say? Again, I thank you all. Keep me in your prayers. Now, I want to do something. Hold up. I want you to do something for me. It's going to be easy. And I want you to take about two, one or two minutes to do it. You can remain seated. I want all of you in here tonight point your hand toward me. Point it toward me. I'm going to ask the pastor to come and pray for me. Okay? Come and pray for me, pastor. And I want all the saints to point your hand this way to me. And you pray for me with him. Okay. 
Come on, congregation, let's stand. I didn't get to make any remarks, but here's my remark. Tomorrow on his birthday is the eclipse. The shadow. Tomorrow's dangerous, right? But he's, we're standing in his shadow. And he never tried to overshadow us, but only to, to cover us and protect us. So we pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, this great servant of God, God, for the years that you gave him, or that you've given him, God, you kept him alive for a reason. God, we needed a, a witness that you still can do it that you can still walk upright, that you can still walk up holy. God, in holiness without no man shall see the Lord. God, I thank you for life, health, and the strength. Now, God, we pray in the name of Jesus. God, that you will strengthen his body in the name of Jesus. God, keep his mind sharp in the name of Jesus. We declare in decree even right now, God, that his body God, come under control of the God that made it. God, you know every ventricle, you know every cell, you know everything about this man. Before he was formed in his mother's womb, God, you knew him. And you ordained him to be a prophet. God, and he, he has been used in the capacity, God, and trained many of us. God, and we thank you for his life. We thank you for his strength and his health. We pray a special blessing for the time that you've given him. God, whatever time you have allotted him, God, let it be a time of strength and not weakness. Strengthen this body in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you. We give you praise. In Jesus' name, let everybody say amen. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your prayers. If you have time to shake my hand, come and shake my hand. If you don't, I understand. God bless you while we're standing. Amen. Point your hands this way again and say, Apostle, happy birthday. Tell them we celebrate you. God bless you. We are dismissed. God bless you. God bless you. Come up. If you would like to shake your hand if you want to shake the Apostle's hand. Y'all let him come around. Let him come around. God bless you. <laughs>